guys um you're welcome to my youtube channel my name is yolo ajaya and thank you for stopping by once again um thank you for the comments the likes and the shares on the last video um i was i was impressed i was glad that i could help so in this video we're going to be talking about the ielts speaking exam i will share with you tips and tricks that can help you perform very very well i had a band eight and it was the it was the most challenging part of the exam for me it wasn't even the writing part that is most challenging for other people the speaking part was very very challenging for me so but let's get right into it so the speaking exam is um, the shortest of all the four aspects of the exam. Literally takes about eight to ten minutes max, and ten minutes is even being very generous. It's very very short. So you you have to make sense, or you have to in, impress your examiner in that very short period of time. So the test or the exam, whichever it is, I'll be swapping between both um, words. Is divided into three sections the first section is basically an introductory session where you're asked your name your whether you work or you school whether you like your job you know just random questions to ease you out get off the anxiety and just get to know you um, that is for part one for part two is where um, you'd be given a topic to speak about for two minutes and that's just all for part two Part three, you'll be asked questions related to what you have spoken about for two minutes. And this is where the actual conversation is because there's going to be a lot of back and forth between you and the examiner just to, you know, have an idea into how you think, how you can express yourself, you know, basically all of those. So that's, and that's just it. Part one takes about one to two minutes, part two, two minutes, part three, two, about two to three minutes. So it's really short, but like I said, it was the most challenging so we we'll start with um, tips to help you number one i wish i knew that it was actually a conversation so unlike the other parts of the exam where you can be right or wrong with the ielts speaking exam it's like a conversation like two people i would have said maybe two friends getting to know each other but to be honest your examiner may not really be your friend but it's just like two people a new person you're meeting for the first time trying to get to know you it's a conversation, nothing more. Nobody cares about where you are, whether your answer is right or wrong. Like I said, it's a speaking exam. They want to know how well you can use words, how you think, and whether you can also hear them, you know, just to assess that. So, like I said, it's a conversation. And the earlier you understood this, the better for you because it's going to calm you down. That there's no marking, there's no, of course, there's a marking guide, but there is no right or wrong answer. So you can't say something and then be wrong. But of course, there are mistakes that you should avoid. But like I said, it's a conversation. So understanding that it's a conversation helps with your mental. It helps to ease you out to know that, yes, this person is just trying to know me. There's nothing more than that. The second thing is to keep it real. Drop the accent. Like, don't even try to, to, to fake a British accent. Because, for instance, I'm Nigerian. Anybody that is looking at me or that is examining me knows that I'm Nigerian. So they don't expect you, of course, except you are born and bred in British or in Britain and you're British. You are not expected to have the British accent. So there's no need to fake it. Don't try to, you know, just don't try to polish yourself because while you're trying to polish yourself, you tend to lose your audibility. There's a word like that. You tend to become inaudible because you're trying to conceal your H factor, your F factor. You're trying to conceal so many things at the same time. And when your examiner cannot hear you properly, they find it difficult to examine you. And if they can't examine you, you don't even have the chance to, to do well because, I mean, they can't hear you. So don't just keep it real. Speak the way you would speak normally if you're having a conversation with someone like you. And you sometimes the examiners are not even white they're black though so most times you might find out that they're actually british but they get you they know that you're not british so keep the accent away that's tip number two tip number three is avoid too short answers 
so when I say two short answers, I mean if they ask you, um, do you think old people are scared about new technology? It's not enough to say yes. I think they are scared of new technology, and then you're looking at the exam and wondering. Next question. It's, it's not enough. So when you are asked questions like that, except you are asked to keep it to a yes or no, which is very unlikely, it is expected that you elaborate. And God so good, or fortunately, you're going to be looking at your examiner in the eye, so you can tell when when they feel that you have said enough. And sometimes they would also stop you when they're ready to go to them. They can they can either gesticulate or say, "Oh, right, right," and then you know you're it's okay for you to stop. But don't don't ever answer any of your speaking questions with yes or just no or just right. I agree. It's not done. So when you say yes, I think older people are scared of technology, and this, this is because they can't operate it. It's thing. It's something like they've never seen before. You know, explain, and then they know that you have the knowledge, and not just that you have the knowledge. You have the right words to express yourself. So that's tip number three. Tip number four is do not memorize answers. Don't try it. While I was preparing for my exam and I was checking some things online, you would see people say, oh, over the years, these are the questions that they ask and speak. They are compilations. You will see them all over the place, compilations of possible answer questions with answers. It's okay to practice the compilation of questions, but do not try to memorize answers because it shows your balance when you get to the exam and then you just, you, you find out that none of the questions that you memorize their answers actually came out as questions. But of course, if you have practiced to an extent, there's literally no question that you can say is new. For me, my question in my part two, I was asked to talk about um, the, a book I had read that I really liked. And that was it. I mean, what was there to not know? That's the thing. Not, they are likely not going to ask you something that you will be clueless about. So don't try to memorize answers because it's just not going to work. Um, the fifth tip is to avoid big words. Don't try to impress. While using British and American English, this is their language. These people are the owners of the language. So I mean, what word do you want to come up with that you don't already know? So don't try to conjure words just to sound very elite and very, you know, out there and all those stuff. It's not necessary. Keep your, as much as you try to use a range of vocabularies, keep your language simple, keep it easily understandable, and just keep it real. Basically, the normal words you use to converse, use them and, you know, just with a little tweaks here and there, just ensure that you don't use too big words. That even you, you're not sure of the meaning. It's very, very important. Another thing is your speed. For instance, uh, and where speed is most important is in part two, where you'll be given two minutes to speak about a topic. It's better to not to to find a mid. What's what's this thing called? A balance. Find a balance between being fast and being slow. So try not to be too slow, but it's very important to also try not to be too fast for two reasons. First is that when you're not too fast, it helps, it gives your brain time to think. So while you are speaking, you're thinking of the next thing that you would say. For instance, as I'm speaking to you now, I feel like I'm fast. So, but when you're speaking during the speaking exam, it's, it's, you know, keep your speed normal, but don't also be too slow, such that your examiner is wondering, I don't understand what's going on. So try to keep your, your balance just normal because it gives you time to think while you're speaking. And another reason why you should not be too fast is that you need to beat the time. Like you need to hit two minutes. Don't stop until you are asked to stop. Because if you don't exhaust your time, your examiner is going to ask you to go on. It's customary that you have to speak for two minutes. So if you don't speak for two minutes, they're going to tell you to go on. And that alone can make you nervous, anxious, like all the anxiety comes in again, and then you probably start repeating what you've said. And when you repeat what you said, it counts against you. So try to, excuse me, try to keep your speed normal such that you can think and such that you can exhaust your time. That is very important. The next tip I would like to speak about is to be audible. Open your mouth fully. Like I said, this is tied to the, to the point of ensuring that you don't fake an accent. 
open your mouth the way i'm opening my mouth the way you can hear me is the way your examiner wants to hear you so like open your mouth be audible so that they can hear you if you're someone that has the very low tone the bedroom voice you might have to increase your tempo for the purpose of your exam because it's it's IELTS is not free, so you don't want to have to rewrite your exam simply because your examiner did not hear you. And you know that once you don't get your desired score you want, you have to rewrite the entire thing. So try to be very, very, very audible. The next point I want to talk about is avoid fillers. And by fillers, I mean things like, like, um, um, sorry, um, excuse me, I mean, it's very hard for some of us we're super super used to using fillers in our words we can say um one million times in one paragraph okay that's an exaggeration but you, you we say it a lot and it's important that the moment you know that you're beginning to prepare for the ielts exam you start to have it in your mind that i'm paying money for this exam i don't want to write it again so i need to mentally you need to bring yourself to a mental space that you understand that you can speak without saying um you can speak without saying actually. You can speak without saying I mean. And if you need to give yourself enough time, that's why I encourage that you start to practice on time. Four weeks, six weeks, so that things like this, you're able to keep them to the barest minimum. Sometimes they, it's not easy to eradicate them totally. But you're able to keep them to the barest minimum such that your entire two minutes or the entire ten minutes of the exam is not filled with um, um, actually. Using filler suggests that you don't have words like you're speechless literally so you need to avoid them as much as possible and like i said it's tied to practice keeping them to the barest 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 minimum so these are some of the tips i would like to share with you or these are the helpful tips i'd like to share with you like i like i said you need to bring yourself to a mental space where you understand that this is a conversation try to keep it real try to keep it simple avoid big words avoid fillers avoid too short answers avoid too long answers exhaust your time don't stop until you're asked to stop just keep it simple and you see eventually after the exam i was very nervous like i said it was most challenging for me at the entrance of the um room where i was going to um take my session i was i was sweaty i was I was just a mess but i realized after the exam that okay it's actually not as bad so i mean having this being in this mental space does a lot for your preparation because you know that nobody is sitting there just to score you they just really want to know what goes on in your mind and how well you can use words so have this at the back of your mind and i can assure you that it's not as bad it's not as bad as many people make it seem of course adequate preparation find people around you that you can have ask you questions there are tons and tons of compilations that you can use and as i'm recording this video just before i post this video i'll check and i'll link some in the description box below resources that can help you prepare find people that can ask you these questions before the exam such that you can put yourself you can simulate an actual exam and put yourself in the exam position and i can bet that you're going to be fine you're really really going to be fine so thank you once again for watching this video and um, please like share subscribe click the subscribe button i think it's somewhere here so click the subscribe button share with your colleagues and i'll see you in the next video